you have a round of applause because I already put the right PowerPoint up here tonight. <laughs> it's the right year with the right numbers. Thanks, a little bit more. Okay, it's the 1819 budget approval tonight. Um, this year, or tonight, hopefully, we're approving a $76 million, $161,000 budget, which constitutes a $678,000 increase over last year's budget, or just under 1%. Before we go any further, this is a balanced budget with no tax increase, and I'll get into that as we move along here. So, in this budget, there's contractual raises for all groups, collectively bargaining and other groups. Um, I, these are two of the most unusual budgets I've ever been involved in. This is actually essentially the third year of a teacher's contract, and then last year was a budget with no teacher's contract. And um, it was just very unusual to do that, and then to save $752,000 in healthcare costs by our switch to the uh, action portion. So, uh, that's, that is what it is, a $752,000 savings in healthcare. We were projecting a $1.3 million increase should we have stayed with our current consortium. So essentially that was a $2 million swing um, to the good and basically saved our budget. Um, the PISA rate was finally leveled off and only increased 0.86% this year. This budget does include a new $1.7 million per year capital lease payment. That is for our Act 39 projects. Um, it started last fall. They'll, they'll go for last summer. They'll go through October this year. Uh, we make that first payment on July 15th. This budget um, does have a reduction in utilities as part of the Act 39 project and also as part of the closed buildings that are no longer in our possession. This building does have new money for our, we do have armed security officers in every building every day. That's inclusive of that. We have a $300,000 per year Chromebook replacement cycle program. As you all know, we have Chromebooks um, in every student's hand here, and it's uh, not advantageous to buy millions of dollars of Chromebooks every year, so we're going to put these on a life cycle of four years, and this is the first purchase of that. This budget includes $35,000 for new band instruments at the high school. We're replacing instruments that haven't been touched since the 80s. And that's very exciting. Uh, and then it also adds uh, $20,000 for some new floor scrubbers. We got two new ones at the high school last year, and we're starting to uh, put those out in some other buildings. Um, our custodians like them very much. So what's not in this budget? There's no tax increase in this budget. Um, there's no increase in federal subsidies. These are, we took what we received this year, and that's what we, we plan for going forward. And there are some inklings of us getting some more resources from the federal government. Uh, however, I did not include those in the budget. Um, there is no budgeted uh, transfer to capital reserve. The last two years, 16, 17, and 17, 18, we sent 1.4 million and $850,000 respectively the last two years. That was another help in, in balancing the budget without the transfer to capital reserve. I'll explain how that will affect this later on. Um, we're in the need of a $50,000 truck, uh, F-350, a plow and spreader on the back that is not included in this budget. Hopefully that'll be a future uh, capital reserve purchase. Um, the other thing we need to replace, $71,000 worth of band uniforms, that is not in this budget. Um, we're seeking some help from the band boosters and trying to create a plan to fund that. And this year in this budget, there is no revenue for sale of fixed assets. Sale of fixed assets, of course, is the sale of our building. So here's how the last few years shook out, um, audit-wise. 16, 17, uh, for being the recovery year where we received the $4.2 million in back plan fund money. And then, of course, that um, being the, the fruition of some of the cuts from the 14, 15, and 15, 16 year. Our fund balance is $6.5 million. We have a balanced budget in 17, 18, and a balanced budget, I should say, 18, 19 in the last column. Um, you know, I expect 16, 17, 18 to come in favorably. We will add the fund balance, even absorbing the teacher retro pay, and it, it is, it'll be very minimal addition to fund balance. So that's a good sign. All right, so here's our real estate tax calculation. Um, as you can see highlighted in the highlighter blue there is the tax rate for next school year. It did not change, 14.2481 mils. Um, the, this board had the option of going to the index 
and that would have increased millage to just under a half a mill would have generated $584,000 in revenue. Um, the exceptions we didn't qualify for with the recent cuts from 14, 15, and 15, 16 uh, are a reduction in staff and a reduction in special ed uh, costs. We didn't qualify for any exceptions, which again is highly unusual, and I had to call the state to ask why that happened. But that is why. So should we have, uh, should this board have decided to raise taxes? I wanted to break this down on a level so people understood in case it should happen in the future. Um, these are assessed values of homes. Uh, we picked four values here. The last being the median uh, household value in the Falls Area School District. Our index increase would have been 0.4986 mills. That would have been a yearly increase per household of $31 and $2.58 per month per household that would have generated the school district a half a million dollars. We'll break down of our revenue here. Uh, we get revenue from really three main sources, um, local, state, and federal. If you'll focus on that, um, the, the two light blue shaded categories to the left, 74% of the money that comes into the school, school district comes from somewhere else. It's not generated in Colorado. We are very, very heavily reliant on a state budget um, and on the uh, federal budget to allocate us money. Only 26% of the money comes from lo local taxes, such as real estate tax and our income tax. Um, to compare those in the categories from 17 to 18, um, a slight change in local revenue is up about $120,000. $100,000 of that is specific to delinquent real estate tax that we've been collecting. And $20,000 is uh, actually interest earnings. As the economy continues to improve, our interest rates are coming back very favorably, and we're earning some more money there. The state revenue, out of the million dollars, 400000 of it is basic ed and uh, special ed allocation. The rest of the money is um, from, because of the increase in salaries, the increase in PEASER's payments, and the increase in FICA payments, those are allocated back to the school district at 66% reimbursement. That's what makes up just about a million dollars there. Uh, we do show a slight increase in the, in the federal revenue, but like I explained, we budgeted 1819 to be what we received in 1718, not what actually the 1718 budget is. And you can see the uh, negative red number there, the 765,000. That, that was the budget for the sale of the buildings last year. So again, it, it, all in all, after all those changes, only a $678,000 increase in budget or just under one percent. Expenditures by category. I want to break these down two different ways. Um, these are basically how um, we do salary benefits, supplies, equipment, uh, purchase services. Again, if you focus on salaries and benefits, 62% of our budget is just paying our people uh, before we get into anything else. And then the gray column up there at the 12%, that is our debt payments. Um, the purchase service payments you see at the left are the 22%. Um, that's a myriad of things, professional services, repair and maintenance, our $6.2 million per year transportation bill, and then also all of our tuition payments are made up in that 22% there. Um, here's, here's a breakdown off of a chart, but again, you see 678,000 increase. The million dollar savings, uh, you see the $1.6 million savings in the 300, 400, 500 level, a um, million dollars of that was diverted back to the school district by the implementation of the FOLA program. Everybody knows that we have our own online academy here. That is a, a million dollar savings for us. The rest of that comes um, kind of dovetails with the tuition. We've um, done some things with our special ed program in line with FOLA, and that created that other savings there. Um, the $426,000 in savings in the 600 level of supply that was basic, 300,000 of that is the savings in utilities. We used to spend about a million to a million two in utilities, that's down to about 900,000. So that's a big savings there, and um, just some other areas of supplies we cleaned up. As far as the equipment category, it's down 33,000. If you remember the 17, 18 budget, we did budget for a first purchase of the forklift, which we do not have here. And then in the 800 and 900 level, this is the uh, Principal and interest on our bonds and on our capital leases, that has increased. That's also transferred to capital reserve, has increased about one and a half million dollars. So that's all encapsulated there.
So we'll just talk about some of the more changes in, uh, in, in expenses here. So contractual increases, 4.53%. Um, really, we because we had a retro pay of 16, 17, and 17, 18 school year, it's really the third year of the teacher's contract for the 18, 19 school year. So it's unusual to see salaries increase 4.53%. Um, it actually would have been a little bit higher, but um, uh, Mr. McDonald and his creative staff, and we had four teacher retirements this year, so our number of teachers went down from 327 to 323, where that number would have been a little bit higher. And here's the uh, something I just couldn't get my handle on in the 12 years that I've been doing school district finances. Our healthcare costs increased 11% um, in, in the history of the world. I've never seen that happen. It happened here. Um, kudos to. Um, the, the everyone in the human resource department and the business office for reconcil reconciling 578 people on our new health insurance bill down to the penny so we knew exactly where our projection was going to be. Um, the PISA rate, again, uh, finally leveled out again into some of that detail on the next slide. Um, it only went up 0.86%. Um, like I after mentioned, the $1.1 million reduction in charter schools tuition as a result of fall level was another driving factor behind balancing this budget. Um, just the 300, 400, 500, those are some of the things, items that we pay um, from those categories. Again, the, the main thing being our outside tuition. Um, our, actually, our, our phone bills are down because of our new Act 39 project, so there, there's a lot, of, a lot of good things happening in that, in that regard. The 600, that, the 600 level, again, I mentioned the $300,000 reduction in utilities as part of Act 39 because of the buildings there. Um, again, 700 because we've increased in the forklift, and then the uh, addition of the capital has kind of predated all that. So I, I wanted to show this projection over the next few years because it, it, these board members are probably sick of hearing me tell them that you have to raise taxes, have to raise taxes, but I don't have a vote, and I'm also not a resident of this community. But this is the teacher's contract specifically, the net dollars that it will cost the district over the life of the contract. So I broke it down in four different ways, both new money each year, the cumulative uh, part of that new money, how that equates to millage, and then the cumulative uh, the millage rate. So we're in the 18-19 school year there. It's, you see it's, uh, we would have needed, should none of these health care changes have taken effect and all these, some of these other cuts, you would have needed a 0.85 mills essentially to balance your budget. Well, without exception, if you notice, if you saw that first slide with the red in there, um, you wouldn't have been able to get there with the tax rate even. So that's my mantra to why we have to raise taxes incrementally to address these costs in the future. So should we leave staffing the same, change nothing as far as providing as, as supplies and property wise, um, this is the millage that we need to accumulate um, to get through that school year. So as you can see, it, it's anywhere from $600,000 to $800,000 a year. I will say this is net. So this is, there's a salary number and then there's the teaser's payment and the FICA payments attached to that and then we get a reimbursement on that. I factored that in. So this is actually money that will leave the school district over the next five years in regards to a teacher's contract. As far as the uh, teaser's historical rates, that's probably the epidemic that's hurting every financial um, school district financially. As you can see over the last 18 years here, it's going from 1% to 33%. So 33 cents on every dollar leaves here and, and goes to pay for, for the employees' pensions. So to kind of think about how that was, we'll say 10 years ago, our salary number is around 28 million right now. If our salary number had stayed level and never increased, it was $28 million, our teacher's bill a decade ago would have been $1.3 million. Today it's $9.2 million. So Peter's increased essentially $8 million, about a mil and a half a year over the last 10 years. That's really what has uh, truly hurt every school district funding issue. Here again is just another analysis of our health care costs. Again, a, a, a steep drop off. I, I mentioned $750,000. That was, that was health specifically. Um, we now have some other groups that are offered dental and vision insurance. So the real savings is about $600,000 um, when you look at it. But, I mean, it's a huge windfall. It balances the budget for the 18-19 year, but um, it's going to be three and five percent increases beyond that um, as as we continue to continue to go. But between the windfall this year and basically 
1920 with the projection being about what it was in 1617. It was a, it was a huge move and uh, kudos to PSEA for bringing that, that move to the district and helping us facilitate that. And thanks to all the employees for meeting with our reps for American Fidelity um, to get you all captured and get you on the new health care center. Thank you. So here's a different way to look at um, our expenditure. This is from an instruction support non-instruction level. Um, you know, 57% of our budget goes to instructing kids. Your support services is all your custodians, all your uh, nurses, guidance counselors, uh, central office administrators. Uh, they offer about 29%. Non-instruction of $1.3 million, that's what we call student activities. That's any of our athletic departments, any of our band, all the supplementals and all the supplies that go along with us, just under $1.2 million, just over almost $1.3 million. And then the $9 million um, for, debt, the, for debt service, about 12% of our budget. Um, it's recommended to be anywhere between 10 to 15% there. So again, that's very favorable as we continue to pay those down. Catch up my notes here. So I'm going to go back to taxes and, and talk about some things that I think are coming down the pipeline in the future. Why we need to either raise taxes or or cut expenditures later on. Um, everybody, everybody, I think is in agreement that we need a little bit of love at Dunmore Township. A renovation over there, we're estimating 20 million dollars. Um, that's a very high estimation, but. That would be a $775,000 a year impact to our budget. Um, Falcon Drive, um, we only need some love. We need some paving probably district-wide. Estimated about two million. Again, two million is two mils of taxes. Um, a fleet vehicle turnover. Um, we have a lot of vehicles here. Um, a lot of them are over 10 years old. We'd like to turn that fleet over in a nice amount of time and maybe do $50,000 worth of vehicle purchases every year. Again, if we turn the whole fleet over in the next 10 years, that's the cost. Um, we have an unfortunate situation. That, uh, it's called a do to do from with the cafeteria fund. For years here, um, the benefits from the cafeteria fund were charged to the general fund. And it created um, what happened before I got here is a recognition that the cafeteria fund actually owed the general fund just shy of a million dollars. So that actually negatively affects our $6.5 million fund balance. Um, and we need to find a way, um, and we're, we're kind of writing a plan now to try to address that cafeteria right off, um, maybe about $200,000, $250,000 a year. The $250,000 uh, curriculum investment, uh, the curriculum budget for 17, 18 is about a half a million dollars, and that revamped some of our uh, ELA uh, things that were going on. But, to continue that curriculum investment, that budget actually dropped to $250,000 this year. So uh, kudos to Dave for that to be able to continue his uh, new curriculum plan by also trimming $250,000 in expenses out of his budget. But that will eventually come back when we do these the book series turnovers. So we'd like to bring that as a future expenditure. Um, with our Act 39 plan with the $1.7 million payment, part of, the, part of that payment, 300000 of it, was to come from the savings and utilities. The other 300,000, we used to have a budgeted transfer of $350,000 a year for capital reserve funding. Um, though we address certain buildings and certain items, it'd be nice to get back to save $350,000 a year. Um, you know, $350,000 a year to address those expenses. Um, so, you know, just to look at that curriculum investment again at $250,000, this is a $76 million budget. So to, to educate our kids, we, you know, besides the personnel costs of about $250,000. And that's our balanced budget for the 18-19 school year. Uh, I just want to kind of give a few shout outs here. Uh, I want to thank Brian for his leadership the last three years. He's seen a uh, turmoil of financial issues that we've solved. And uh, he's been a guy that liked me and really everybody on the finance committee um, Mr. McDonald uh, basically saved the day with his creative staffing and, and his, his curriculum budget cuts. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed in the budget when you see those giant amounts. And then lastly, you know, the staff in the business office, Sharif Kelly, Vicki, Kathy, Diane, um, they're timely reporting of information, they're reconciling with the bank every month, they're posting of salaries and benefits, allow me to do these 
projections and, and figure out where we are here today. Um, so I thank everybody and let's know you have some more questions. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Benko. Uh, we're going to move into uh, public comment for agenda items. We have two people on the uh, roster for today. First will be uh, Crystal Pedro. Topic: The topic is Kristen Collins' resignation. Questions. First one is with Miss Collins resigning. Is she resigning with a full pension? Um, we will not be commenting on it dealing with um, employment issues. So that's a confidential employment question that we're commenting on. Okay. There is a lot of uh, public issues. It's also it is very public. It, her employment really doesn't matter to me, but her actions do. And in a recent events that has occurred in the park over the past seven days, um, I can elaborate on it if you'd like to hear, but I'm sure that you wouldn't, and most of you are already aware of what has happened. I don't feel as well as many parents that sitting here that this woman should be resigning with a pension. You want to accept the resignation, that's fine, but as the taxpayers in the budget that you just said, with 33 cents of each person's dollar coming out, that she's going to receive a pension, it's kind of stuff. Thank you for your comment. Did you have another topic too, or just that? Yes, the, the uh, registration. Okay. It says on here for the request for approval of all students registering for the kindergarten by the age of five of June 1st, the prior year of starting kindergarten. Can somebody elaborate exactly what that means? Is that the prior year of so that would be, starting? That would be June. Uh, so if we're starting the school year August 22nd, it would be June 1st of that, that year. year. Yeah, so we're, Right now, what's in play is you have to be five by the first day of school, okay? And what we're trying to do is what we've, we've been struggling with, and we're, we're going to be consistent with districts that surround us and the trend that's happening in education is just trying to give kids a couple more months of maturity, um, identifying our kids that are going to be coming into kindergarten a little bit sooner because we have transition camps that we want to offer throughout the summer to make sure those kids are prepared so when they come into kindergarten, we're trying to even out the playing field for those students and our teachers. Um, we're created a relationship with our Head Start program. We have nine Head Start classrooms now in the Connellsville area and our kindergarten teachers actually met with them a couple months ago um, where we're just really uh, focusing on that kindergarten first, second grade uh, to make sure that we're doing the best that we can because if our kids aren't reading at grade level at third grade, we don't have we don't have a chance. We all know that. Our, our teachers know that. Our students know that. Our, our 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 parents know that. So we're just trying to be proactive to get them um, a little bit more mature, uh, identify them a little bit sooner who they are going to be, um, and we're kicking back registration in March, and then hopefully be able to support them through the summer, um, along with the, the the previous year with our Head Start programs locally and. 3K count programs locally that gives our kids the best shot to be successful day one of their first day of school to kindergarten and college. So it's only truthfully three to four months. Three months. Back. Three months. Like, if, if it was a lot of parents was assuming if, when it said prior year, yeah. like my child wouldn't be entering kindergarten until she was almost seven. Right. No, just that three months uh, okay. prior to where we're at now. All right. Maybe, Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And next we have Holly Grimm, same subject. Okay, thank you. Right, we're going 
then move into uh, report of departments. Start with athletics and recreation. Uh, Mr. Lake. Thank you, Mr. Mongeau. Request approval to accept the donation from Nan Cavalier and family of the park bench in memory of longtime assistant football coach Gene Cavalier to be placed at the Carnival Stadium, and I so move. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Request approval to allow Dr. Francis Jakubonski, Judge John Wagner, Attorney Charles Watson, Dr. John Ellis, and John Coleman to explore the designing and securing funding to donate a monument in honor of the Olympic gold medalist, John Luger, and Heisman Trophy winner, John Lujak, to be placed at the Connorsville Stadium. And I so move. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Request approval to award bids for all sports sup supplies and equipment to the lowest responsible bidder meeting specifications. And I so move. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Request approval of the AstroTurf Change Order 001 for two quick combination soccer goal slash goal post in the amount of $11,058 to be paid from the 2017-18 athletic budget, and I so move. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Number five is request approval of the 2018-2019 Ball Sports Supplemental Contracts. And I so move. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Request approval of the following supplemental contracts for the 2018-2019 school year contingent upon a receipt of a signed contract no later than one month after issuance including the posting of the position if the contingency is not met. Would anybody, any board member like any of these separate before I start? Not our read one. I'll go ahead and read them. Eighth grade assistant football coach Todd Barrett. Seventh grade head football coach Steve Schaefer. Seventh grade assistant football coach Gunnar Lynch. Seventh grade assistant football coach Jim Bigham. Middle school girls head soccer coach Matt Ritchie. Middle School Girls Assistant Soccer Coach, Lacey Kepper. Girls Varsity Head Golf Coach, Ken House. Varsity Volleyball Head Coach, Sarah Bush, Bush, Bushy. I'm sorry if that's pronounced wrong. Varsity Assistant Football Coach, Eli Bisnick. And Football Equipment Manager, Mark Lynch. And I so move. We have a motion in second. All in favor. What, what's the difference between that one and the one previous? Does anybody know? The motion Mike we just read a few minutes ago says who the false sports. And this one looks like it's false sports. All these are new, new yeah, positions. Okay. Okay, thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Number seven is request approval of the following volunteer coach for the 2018-2019 school year of varsity football, Mike Coons. And I so move. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Mr. Mortusi, do you have anything to add? That's all we have to see with Mr. Mongeau. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lake. We'll move to buildings and grounds. Mr. O'Malley. Request approval to purchase the following from Bacon Sanitary Supply to be paid from the 2018-2019 budget. Uh, these, are, these are scrubbers. Uh, Chariot 3 for $12,224.39 and a BD 5050 for $4,335. And I said, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Moses Carey. Request to approve the purchase of 2018 F-150 4x4 truck from Megan Ford, co-stars number 025203, at a cost of $24,602 to be paid from the capital reserve fund as budgeted. We have the motion and the second. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Number three, request approval of the following additions to the custodial sublist for the 2017-2018 school year. Okay, you went and I so moved. Sure. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. And number four, request approval of the following summer custodial employees at minimum wage, Andrew Kelly, Ethan Price, and James Cessna. And I so moved. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, anything, Mr. Horseman? I have nothing, thank you. Mr. Bollocks, Mr. Kirchner. Okay. That's all we have, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Romantic. Moving to Coronated Free Library, Mr. Horseman. Thank you, Mr. Mongell. I have nothing. Mr. Martuzzi? Yes, sir. Mr. Kissel? Nothing. We have nothing, thank you. Thank you, sir. Under Conestal Area Career and Technical Center, Mr. Martre. Thank you, Mr. Mongell. Request approval to conduct the Summer EMT Academy at the CACTC for four weeks beginning on July 9th and ending on August 3rd, 2018. Upon completion of all course requirements, students will become certified emergency medical technicians through the PA Department of Health and the National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians. Instructors will be Mr. Ron Barry, Lieutenant Colonel Eric Sheets, all associated costs with the exception of $100 for student tuition to be paid uh, for through the Perkins Funds, and I so move. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion is carried. That's all I have, uh, Mr. Mongeau, uh, Mr. Matty. Mr. Dane? Just to follow up, a couple months ago, the board voted to go into a co-op with the Indiana Career Technology Center to study, uh, to do a feasibility study on the process of having an LPN program at night for adults. And the board voted to go half on the study. I think it was $943. I just got a letter from the Joint Operating Committee the Indiana Career Technology Center. They voted to do the same. So I will keep the board apprised of that. And that may be something that's really good for our career and technology center starting in the fall. Also, last week, three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 9 to 3, we held a future first responders camp for eighth graders. I believe we had 20 of them that came in for three days fire, police, and EMS. And they did an evaluation, and 19 of the 20 said that they would be choosing a career of sorts at the Career and Technology Center in ninth grade. Also, on your uh, table, each board member, and I believe Mr. McDonald, I left a uh, crossroads by the Cultural Trust on page number four. It's a two page article on the Career and Technology Birdhouse project that the Wellness students did. Also, on the second page, there's a list of Looks like about 20 projects that they have done in the community for various groups over the last five, six years. Uh, please take the time and look through that and read it. It's a, it's a really good article. Uh, Mike Weber did a good job. Also, there's two other articles one on the future first responders camp, and also a newsletter in there for the Career and Technology Center that we hand out to all the business leaders at our occupational advisory committee meeting in the spring. So, when you get a chance, you folks would read those. There are really good articles about community and school partnerships and uh, good PR. 
And on a side note, I was going to say a thing that I feel obligated. We had a commencement, and I don't know whether a lot of you board members there went really well, but the Falcon Foundation of this Mr. Arshman, who was a uh, beginning member, and there's some people who got off there since then. Marvin Becky McClucky approached me about a month ago. Most of you, I don't know if you know this, they renamed the scholarship award here in the Career Tech Center, Kenneth James Memorial Scholarship. And uh, I just want to say thank you to the Falcon Foundation publicly. My dad would be honored, so thank you. That's all I have. Mr. James. And moving to curriculum, uh, Mr. Bernardo. Thank you, Mr. Montiel. Request approval for all students registering for kindergarten to be age five by June 1st of the year prior to starting kindergarten. This is, will go into effect for the 2019-2020 school year in I said We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's carried. Request approval to purchase science content and resources that are aligned with the NGSS standards from the Keller Science Middle School grades 6, 7, and 8 in an amount of $5,723 as budgeted. Not simply. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Mr. Horseman, you can do Mr. I do, Mr. Bernardo, please. I'd like to take a quick moment and brag about our kids and our teachers. Um, we received our PSSA math scores in the middle of the week, and uh, we saw some great things, and I just want to talk about that briefly. Uh, I'll be doing a more uh, exhaustive report here in August, but our initial reports in third grade, we had an increase of 5% overall in our third grade classrooms, in our fourth grade classrooms, an increase of 5%, in our fifth grade classrooms, an increase of 14%, um, and in our eighth grade classroom, an increase of 3.7%. We also had some, some grade levels that I just want to mention. At West Crawford in grade three, uh, they had a 15.1% increase. Grade four, 17.4% increase. In grade five, a 22.9% increase at West Crawford. At Bullskin, fourth grade math had a 16.9% increase. Springfield, fifth grade, 22.4% increase. And at Dunbar Township, grade three had a 10.9% increase. In grade five, had a 16.4% increase. And then grade eight at the middle school, as I spoke to at a three and a half percent increase. Um, what our teachers are bringing and our students have bought into is starting to take hold and work, and it's something that we should all be proud of as a community. As I've spoken to some superintendents lately in the last two days, there are some guys that are not real happy right now, and we have a lot to be proud of. And I just wanted to share that, to thank our teachers and our students and, and, and our families uh, for, for giving the effort that you are giving at home uh, so our kids can be successful. Thank you. That's all we have, Mr. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bergonda. I'll stay with you with uh, cyber. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mongeau. We have no report at this time. Mr. Martray, you can add. Mr. Martusa? Martusa, I'm sorry. And Mr. McDonald. That's all we have. Thank you. Moving to federal programs, Mr. Kissel, please. Thank you, Mr. Mongeau. Item number one, request approval for the Safe Schools Special Education Course Bundle at a cost of $2,575 to be paid from Title II funds and I send it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Item two, request approval for continuation of services for the 2018-19 school year for Anna DeForest, English Language Arts Coach, K-12, at a rate of $400 per day, not to exceed 85 days, to be paid from Title I, Title II Professional Development. That was a nice and move. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? 
Roll call. Yes. Yes. services for the 2018-19 school year for Barbara Mihailov and $400 a day not to exceed eight days per month to be paid from Title I, Title II professional development funds and I so move. Absolutely, yes. And I, I feel like they have some ownership in that. I, I do. Um, I also, uh, you know, would like to say we've, we've cut those days in half from last year to this year. Um, and from 2000, I think I, I looked up in 2011-12, we spent over 180,000 in consulting fees. Um, so we, we've narrowed that down to where we are now. So. This is not our general fund. This is Title II, uh, 2A professional development funds. It's an allocation by the by the federal government that you have to spend towards either class size reduction or professional development. Um, and, and like I said in the past, there's also some room in Title I, but, but these were quadrupled in the past. Mr. McDonald, is it cheaper to pay these people or to uh, put a new teacher in there? Well, when you have a consultant come in, you don't have to pay um, benefits. So you're paying a daily rate and, and that's it. So it's, it's cheaper for them uh, than it would be for us to, to put a new teacher salary with teachers and those kind of things. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Actually, Title II and Title IV, which is new allocation this year, you can carry over 100% Title II and IV. Title I, you carry over 15%. Um, it is general practice among most federal program coordinators that you spend it, because if you don't spend it, um, you know, the, the federal government looks at it in a way where you're not using those funds. Um, but you are allowed to carry over. Um, it, there, there is there is the possibility of doing that. Um, but allocations for future years are based on usage in the current years. That is part of the, the component that goes into what you're allocated, among some of things, yes. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Ronaldo. Anything further? Not further. Thank you, Mr. Lake. Not Mr. Bum. Do we have nothing else to add? Okay, moving to finance. You still have the floor, Mr. Good. Okay, thank you. Item number one, request approval to award the Eleanor E. Rowland Memorial Scholarship in the amount of 2008-0509 to Sadie Mock Snyder. That's it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Item two, request approval to award the band 
Nasdell Memorial Scholarship in the amount of $250 to Andrew Kelly and I send them. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Item 3, request approval to award the Pittsburgh Foundation Great Neck Fund Scholarship in the amount of $1,108.66 to William Verasio. Am I simple? Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is carried. Item 4, request approval of the errors and omissions insurance participation agreement for the PSDA Insurance Trust School Leaders Legal Liability Risk Management Program, Property Casualty, Auto and Excess Liability, with the broker of record being Deferio Mongellan Associates for the fiscal year 2018-19 at a cost of $201,649. This includes coverage for the Collinsville Area School District and Collinsville Area Career and Technical Center, and I send them. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Request approval of the workers' compensation insurance policy from Brick Street Insurance Company and Scholastic Cyber Liability Policy, Lloyds of London, with the broker of record being Arthur J. Gallagher and Company for the 2018-2019 school year at an estimated annual premium of $249,718. This includes coverage for the Connellsville Area School District and the Connellsville Area Career and Technical Center. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Request approval of the following depositories for the Connellsville Area School District for the 2018-2019 school year. PNC Bank, Somerset Trust Company, PLGIT, PSDLAF, and S&T Bank. And I send it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Before I read this next item, I would just like to thank Mr. Galetto and all of the staff that were involved in balancing our budget this year. It was not an easy process. As Mr. Galetto illustrated in his slide presentation, this is one of the reasons why property taxes fails as a method of funding our school districts is because the base never changes and we are burdened with changing the rates. Unlike earned income tax, where as wages go up, taxes go up, and so it covers the cost of living needs of a, of a municipality, we don't have that luxury. And we will continue to be diligent to challenge our budget going forward to make sure that dollars we spend are dollars that are benefiting our students. So with that said, I will request approval of the final budget for the general fund approval resolution in the amount of seventy-six million one hundred sixty-one thousand two hundred seventy-two dollars in my summary. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Item eight. Request approval of the 2018-2019 annual tax levy resolution. And I so move. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. And item nine, request approval of the 2018-2019 Homestead and Farmstead Exclusion Resolution. And I so move. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Before I move on to item number 10, I would also like to note for the public that item 789 will be available on the website tomorrow. I had no desire to keep you here until 10 o'clock reading through all of that prohibition. So we move on to item number 10, request approval of the donation of band trailer from the Falcon Band Boosters to the Connellsville Area School District at a value of $12,271.80. And I second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Item number 11, request approval to advertise the sale of the 2003 Avenger trailer, and I so move. Second. Question. I look for advertising price for a reason more 
Um, we'll take sealed bids um, for this one. How are we going to advertise? Oh, we, well, we, we do advertise it in the newspaper, put it on the website, and we'll make sure it doesn't exceed the cost of the So, excellent point. <laughs> if we could just direct people to the website to get information and minimize the cost. Yeah, certainly. If we will have a uh, uh, unused equipment list, this will be on that. As anybody who still wants a projector, I'm a warehouse full of things. We have we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Item number twelve: request approval of the budget transfers as proposed, and I so move. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is carried. Request approval of the donations of $1,694.47 from Glenn and Carol Johnson of Greensmith, PA, for acoustic panels for the high school band room and ice and move. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. That's all I have, Mr. Maddox. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Galetko? Thank everybody for the budget process again, and uh, thank the uh, band boosters for the donation of the trailer, and uh, Lenny Carroll Johnson uh, for their generous donation. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. That's all we have, Mr. 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 Mondial, I have a question. Yes. Uh, this could go to Mrs. O'Brien or Mr. Galeco. Uh With the Cypher and Cypher uh, audit, can we get a helicopter view of what the board was was presented with that audit on uh, Monday night. I'll have to defer to uh, Ms. O'Brien because it involved the foreign employment issue whether we can make that public. I don't believe it's uh, school code to adopt that like a normal financial statement. Recall. Um, that was a matter that was handled with Annie, the conflict there with that matter. So he personally handled, handled all of it. I'll be happy to have him come. He was here earlier. Come next month and advise everybody of the content of that. That'll be fine, as long as everybody knows what the, what the findings are. Yeah, it, yeah, I wasn't aware you were going to ask that or we would have had him. Okay. All right. I have a question. All right, thank you. And next we we'll go to food service, Mr. Marcus. Thank you, Mr. Mongeau. I'm looking at this time, Mr. Lee. Mr. Amanda. Nothing, thank you. Mr. Messinger, give me that. That's all, thank you. And uh, under personnel and review, Mr. Martre. Thank you, Mr. Mongeau. Request approval for a sabbatical leave of absence for Colby Wagner, middle school technology education teacher for the first semester of the 2018-2019 school year. No, so moved. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Great. I so move. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Request approval of the revised technology department uh, employment policy effective July 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2020, as proposed is on file in the Human Resources Office. My so move. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Request approval. Work Systems Coordinator effective July 1st, 2018, and an annual salary of $45,000. Am I so moved? Uh, this is a motion that was made in second, but uh, this was not on the agenda on Monday. This was an add on. So, any, any comments? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried.
properly moved and seconded. This is also uh, a motion that was not on the agenda for Monday. Any questions? It's, it's for approval. It was request approval of the Act 93 agreement as proposed. Any comment? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's carried. That's all I have, Mr. Mongeau, Mr. Matt. Thank you, Mr. Mortray. Moving to policy and legislative, Mr. Rivera. Request approval to rescind the following policies which were merged into the May 23rd, 2018 board approved policies 103 and 104. These four individual policies are no longer needed as recommended by PSDA. Policy number 248, unlawful harassment and bullying. 348, unlawful harassment. 448, unlawful harassment and 548 unlawful harassment. I so move. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Number two, request approval of the following additional policies contingent upon solicitor review. 226.1 metal detectors, 826 metal detectors, 828.1 criminal history, Record information. Can I so move? Second. A question. It was. We should have gotten an updated copy of it, but we did change the language in the paragraph so that anyone, any student that did not, that refuses to be searched upon attempting to enter the school will be detained at that location until administrators can get there and assure a proper search is done. Or the people will be, he or she will be removed from the building. Yep. Any other questions? Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Mr. McDonald, do you have anything? No. Mr. Lake? No. Mr. McDonald? No. That's all we have. Thank you, Mr. Romantic. Moving to safety and security, Mr. Martuzzi. Thank you, Mr. Mongeau. I have nothing this time, Mr. Mortray. No. Mr. Horstman? Nothing, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Under special education, Mr. Mortray. Thank you, Mr. Mongeau. Request approval of the settlement agreement in ODR case number 2059317-18KE as proposed. I so move. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Request approval for Charles Michael, Director of Special Education, to attend the 2018 Special Education Leadership Academy, Bedford Springs, PA, Monday through Thursday, July 16th through July 19th, 2018, at an approximate cost of $950 for registration, lodging, meals, travel, in accordance with the district travel policy of budget. I so move. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Request approval of the agreement between Westmoreland Unit 1 and the Connellsville Area School District for Student Services Interagency beginning July 1st, 2018, ending June 30th, 2019, as proposed. And I so move. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. That's all I have, Mr. Mongeau. Mr. Lake? Mr. Bernaldo? Mr. Michael? Thank you, Mr. Mortray. Moving to student services. Mr. Hartman, please. Thank you, Mr. Mongeau. Item number one, I'd like to defer to Mr. Kissel. Thank you, Mr. Hartman. Request approval of the Intermediate Unit 1 ESL services intent to participate for the 2018-2019 school year, and I so move. Second. 
Properly moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? Abstain. We have uh, one abstention. Uh, motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Request approval of the following school district positions in a charge of seven dollars and eighty-five cents for each student physical examination and eleven dollars and twenty cents for each bus driver physical examination for the 2018-2019 school year, and I so move. Sorry. We have probably proper second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion's carried. I'm sorry, I should have done Dr. Gina Canada, Dr. Rachel Fasson Esposito, Dr. William Kozik, Dr. Tiffany Pluto, and Dr. Murray Beth Bradley for the positions. And I think they haven't changed for the last three or three years. It's been that way. Thank you. Request approval of the following dental examiners at a charge of 85 cents for each dental examination for the 2018-2019 school year. Dr. Dale Cadwaller, Dr. Joseph Tromniak, Dr. Frank Jacob Lansky, Dr. Jerry Perez, and Dr. Grimaldi. And I so move. Properly moved, properly second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion is carried. Request approval of the Qualified Service Agreement between the Bay County Drug and Alcohol Commission, Incorporated, and the Causal Area School District Student Assistance Program, as proposed, and I so move. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion is carried. Request approval to purchase a voice release for the trap club at a cost of $2,500, and I so move. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. That's all I have, Mr. Kissel. The only thing I would like to add for our trap club is after their second year in operation, they won the state championship, which is accolades to our students, our coaches, and everybody that supported that program, and our sponsors. Um, kudos to them. Thank you. Mr. Martucci? Mr. Mike? That's all we had, Mr. Mongeau. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Harshman. Moving to technology, Mr. Granada. Thank you, Mr. Mongeau. Request approval to purchase the hosting services of Meals Plus Cafeteria Management System at a cost of $3,600 and budgeted by so Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Number two. Request approval to purchase the licenses from Bumby LLC for the 2018-2019 school year and a total cost of $800 as budgeted in my Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Number three. Request approval to purchase the licenses from Moose Chase Venture for the 2018-2019 school year and a total cost of $400 as budgeted in my Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Number four, request approval to purchase 100 HP laptops from Staples Business Advantage in a total, in a total amount of $67,756 as budgeted in 2018-2019. Budget, and I so move. Properly moved and second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Number five, request approval to purchase 330 box lights from Cloudcast in the, in the amount of $91,470 as budgeted in 2017-2018. Nice and we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Number six, request approval to purchase 350 Chromebooks for 
2019 for the GOV connection in the amount of $70,980 as budgeted. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Recently, to purchase their Chromebooks for $50 until July 13th, after which time they will be offered to the current district employees at $50 and I send them. We have a second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Mr. Kissel, anything to add? I uh, just wanted to let everybody know um, this past Saturday and Sunday, the district was invited to participate in the Art on the Dock Festival by the Fayette County Cultural Trust. Um, two teachers and I volunteered to take one of our laser cutters from the Fab Lab down to the river park. And we were trying to gen generate an interest in our tech ed programs through artistic expression. Uh, the weather wasn't all that cooperative, but um, we did have a, a decent number of students come through our booth um, that had a, a real interest in what we had going on. Um, their parents were really excited about all the technology opportunities that we have here as a district. So just wanted to update everyone on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garris. I'd like to thank you and uh, the two teachers who did participate on their own time out of the goodness of their hearts to try to promote our programs here at the Thank you. Mr. Martri, Mr. Ghost, I also like to thank you and your team for the work that you did on putting together the uh, policy. And I suspect our review as well. Thank you very much. And that we passed here tonight. Mr. Ghost, do you have anything else to add? That's all we have, Mr. Martri. Thank you, Mr. Granada. Under transportation, Mr. Lake. Thank you, Mr. Martri. Mr. Harshman, do you have anything? Nothing. We have nothing to report, Mr. Montel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Under um, the non agenda items, we have one person wishing to speak tonight, April Mark. Good evening, everyone. I'm here as a parent tonight, not as a staff member, so I would like you to keep that in mind when I address you this evening. The first thing I want to do is thank this board for the support you just showed to our track team. My son is 12, um, first year on the shop varsity this year, went to states, tremendous team. Saw Mr. Brooks in the back, so I do appreciate your support and that recognition because those kids work hard and they work year round cold rain, shine, so I do want to thank you for that. Um, like I said, I'm here tonight as a parent, not as a staff, and my goal here tonight to speak to you is just to make you aware of a situation that did occur to my 12-year-old son. So on May 31st, my son was involved in a hit-and-run accident while in a school district van. It is subcontracted or service contracted through Nelson's. Accidents happen. I'm not in any way faulting the driver. It was in no way her fault. Our driver was pulled off to the side of the road when another vehicle came down, side swiped my son's van, everything off the mirror, and sped away. The driver of that van called Nelson's, called her immediate supervisor, and she was instructed not to report the hit and run accident to the state police. I want to make that clear to you. She was informed by her supervisor not to report that. So my son was back on the road, finished taking him home, dropped him off. In the following weeks, I took it upon myself as any irritated parent would do. I found a woman, open and closed case handed her over nicely gift wrapped to the state police. You can imagine my anger 
to find out that this woman cannot be prosecuted because Nelson's failed to report to the state police. My son even identified her. Nothing can be done. Corporal Bausch is the corporal that was in charge of the case. When I contacted him to find out why nothing was able to be done, he contacted Nelson's. He was told that the van driver was in fact instructed not to report that when it happened because of the fear that his insurance rates would raise due to having an accident. He was also told that he had spare parts and he'd be able to fix it just fine on his own, so they were not notified. That's my first issue. You may also find it somewhat alarming that I was never notified of the accident by Nelson's or by our district. I did not learn about the accident until the next day when my son told me. You can imagine once again that I was not happy. At this time I called Mr. Evans. He too was unaware that the accident had occurred. He stressed to me that Nelson's had been instructed to notify him immediately of any incident, no matter how small, with it occurs with the child on board. To be clear, Mr. Evans is not at fault in this matter. It was Nelson's, again, that completely failed to meet the responsibility as our transportation service provider. It was relayed to me later that Nelson's did try to file a report with the state police, but that was only after they had been contacted by Mr. Evans. Legally speaking, from Corporal Bosch, this is unacceptable. It cannot be filed. Once the vehicles are moved from the hit and run, a report cannot be made that would allow prosecution of the other driver. So they did try about a week too late, and it didn't help me at all. So in closing, gentlemen, I'm not asking for any help. I'm not asking you for, to do anything. You can't. I, I know that. There is nothing that anyone can do. The appropriate report wasn't filed, and it's too late to do anything about it now. So all you can do as a board is to take a hard look at our transportation service providers. It is clear that the concern over rising insurance rates took precedence over safety and the policy that we have in place, and that our head of transportation's directive of being notified was blatantly ignored. Both of these issues need addressed. Hey guys, 6.2 million, I believe, Mr. Collector. 6.2 million. That's what we got for 6.2 million. If Nelson can't do better, I would hope as a board you are looking hard to find someone that will. That's all. Mr. Martin, I spoke with Mr. Evans. Uh, we are following up. I apologize to you that this happened, but Mr. Evans is going to be um, vigilant. Uh, he's spoken to, to Nelson's. Um, we are going to make it crystal clear um, and that the expectation of reporting those things and how we're going to move forward. Um, and we'll be addressing it again. As I, I will handle this. And I, I do appreciate that, and I do want that completely clear. Mr. Evans can't handle what he is not informed of. You know, Mr. Evans was not happy about the situation. As soon as I called him, he did call, and of course that's what prompted Nelson's then to call the state police and try to file that. Um, but at that point, it's not legally valid once the vehicles have been moved from the place um, where the accident had occurred. Um, so I do appreciate this. I know you guys are really big right now in revamping policies and taking a look at things that you have in front of you, and I just really, this is one thing that definitely needs looked at. I mean, I know most of you sitting in front of me, your parents, if your child has been involved in an accident in a district vehicle, how many of you would expect to be notified? Pretty much everybody here I would guess. I don't, I don't think anything that I'm asking for would be unreasonable. But like I said, Mr. Evans can't deal with what he's not um, presented with himself. So um, I know he was not happy with the situation. Corporal Walsh was not happy with the situation. Um, we got no resolve. Um, you know, 
for what had, had happened. So I do appreciate your time on it. And um, my only goal here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is to make you aware that these are the kind of things that are happening for six point two million dollars. Well, how did you find out about it the next day? My son told me. He didn't tell you what happened. That evening, no, he did not. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And let's see, moving into the President's report, we have one item on for today. Um, and it, it concerns moving uh, the July meeting from the end of July, like it was normally scheduled, forward until the, um, August. Uh, this was done after a consultation uh, during the executive session with uh, some issues that will be coming up later with personnel that have to be dealt with earlier than what we would normally do in an August setting. Um, request to cancel the meeting scheduled uh, on the fourth Monday and Wednesday of July 2018 and to schedule the next regular meetings for Monday, August 13th and Wednesday, August 15th, 2018, and I so move. We have a motion and a second. Are there any comments? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Do we have a uh, motion to adjourn? Thank you.